Hello all you lovely people, Spring is here gamers, and that means it's time for some serious savings on amazing titles. Both the Epic Game Store and Steam are bursting with deals in their spring sales, but with so many options, where do you start? Don't worry, I've got you covered, because in this video, I'm going to be talking about top 15 games. Well, not in any order of preference, it's not like the first game, number one game is the best game in this list. But these are games that you absolutely need to check out during these Epic sales. It features hidden gems, must-have AAA releases, and incredible discounts you don't want to miss. So grab your wallets, or virtual wallets, so to speak, and get ready to dive into a treasure trove of gaming goodness. Now with that said, let's get started, folks. The first game on my list today is The Outer Worlds Spaces Choice Edition, which is a remaster of the 2019 RPG. And um, I would say that the foundation is definitely stellar. The core game remains fantastic. It's got engaging world building, quirky humor, and it's also got a strong focus on player choice, which make it a very compelling sci-fi RPG experience. The writing is sharp, the companions are memorable, and the soundtrack sets the tone perfectly. Now this Spaces Choice Edition also comes with the Murder on Eridanos DLC, which is a story expansion. And uh, this DLC is excellent and it's a major plus for newcomers. It adds new locations, quests and lore to the base game. Now, who should get this game? Now, new players, you will find this game absolutely fantastic. Especially if you want this game on a good deal. This is probably one of the best times to buy this game. It's heavily discounted. Even the existing players who have played the base game but have never played the story DLC it's a good option to go in for this Spaces Choice Edition because uh, it is the version, the ultimate way to play this game in my personal opinion. And uh, like I said earlier, the core game, it is still fantastic. And uh, I think that now that it's discounted, it's very easy to recommend this game. Do check it out and let me know what your thoughts are about the Outer Worlds Spaces choice edition. The next game on my list is definitely Hogwarts Legacy. Now this aims to deliver the ultimate Harry Potter RPG experience. A breathtaking Hogwarts is what it offers because this world is truly awe-inspiring. The developers have meticulously recreated the iconic castle, brimming with secrets, hidden passages and the bustling life of a magic school. You get to explore every nook and cranny and it's a pure joy for Potterheads. The combat is fluid, it is engaging. Mastering spells and stringing together combos feels powerful and satisfying. Blasting foes with a well-timed stupefy or experimenting with spell combinations keeps your combat fresh. Now, why do I recommend it? Well, it's everything that you've ever dreamed of if you have seen the Harry Potter universe. That is, if you have dreamt of attending Hogwarts, this is the game to get. If you have ever dreamt of wielding a wand and shaping your own wizarding destiny, then Hogwarts Legacy is a must play. Now, it isn't a perfect game, but it comes darn close to fulfilling the wizarding dream. This world is a love letter to Harry Potter fans, the combat is a blast, and your choices hold weight. Well, the story is somewhat predictable, but uh, apart from that, it is a fantastic game and the world building stands out because it's incredible. And I will highly recommend this game, especially now that it's discounted, although it's been some time since it's out, but it's one of those games that you can easily recommend it, I mean recommend especially on a discount. With that said, what do you think about Hogwarts Legacy? Let me know in the comments section. Next on the list is Cyberpunk 2077 Ultimate Edition. Now, Cyberpunk 2077's launch was a roller coaster of unfulfilled promises and bugs. But with the release of the Ultimate Edition and the subsequent patches, Night City has finally become the neon drenched playground it was meant to be. Because this Night City is a living, breathing metropolis with a captivating story that branches based on your choices. 
you will encounter unforgettable characters, explore diverse districts, and delve into the city's dark underbelly. This Ultimate Edition also includes Phantom Liberty. This is a story DLC expansion which offers new story content, new characters, new locations, and it expands upon the world of Cyberpunk 2077. This Ultimate Edition is worlds apart from the original launch of this game, which was atrocious, but now this feels like a completely different game. You've got enhanced visuals and even the gameplay improvements are remarkable. The game has never looked better. It now has impressive ray tracing on compatible hardware, of course, and the gameplay has also been refined, offering a smoother and more balanced experience compared to launch. Now, fans of immersive RPGs with a strong narrative and a unique cyberpunk setting will definitely enjoy this game. Let me know what you think about this now that it's discounted. The Callisto Protocol Deluxe Edition. This game is the brainchild of Dead Space co-creator Glenn Schofield and it arrived promising a terrifying descent into a prison moon overrun by mutated horrors. The Deluxe Edition sweetens the pot with bonus cosmetics and it also features a story DLC. Personally, I love the Callisto Protocol and I in fact prefer this over the Dead Space remake. Now I'm sure I'm gonna get some comments in the comment section speaking about why the Dead Space is superior, but hey, choice is subjective. I personally like this more and I'm laying down the reasons why I like this more. Personally to me, I think the visual presentation of this game is comparatively better than the Dead Space remake. The voice acting is stellar. The motion capture is stellar. The likeness of the actors, it just makes you relate to this game a lot more than the Dead Space remake. There's also bone crunching brutality because you're using a brutal melee system. Some may like it, some may not. There's also a variety of firearms. You will of course get to dismember and dispatch grotesque enemies in shards of viscera. So it's not for the faint of heart, but for those seeking pure, unadulterated horror. It definitely delivers. It boasts of impressive character models, detailed environments, and fantastic lighting effects. And um, this game, however, is a demanding game, so you definitely need good hardware to be able to run this game well. Now, fans of gory horror games who crave intense combat, they're gonna love this game. Players seeking a visually impressive, atmospheric experience on powerful hardware, please note, on powerful hardware, you're gonna love this game. Those intrigued by the Dead Space legacy and for those who have been fans of Schofield's work and his return to the genre, you of course will love this game. But gamers looking for a deep and varied combat system with strategic depth, uh-uh, this game ain't for you. And players who prioritize a well-crafted story with engaging characters, well, it is a mix here because it does deliver some engaging characters, but the story is pretty linear and pretty straightforward. So it's not the best that this game offers. But overall, I, again, would like to emphasize on the fact how much I loved this game and how I prefer this over the Dead Space remake. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comment section. Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate. Now, the original 7 Remake took the world by storm in 2020, but Integrate arrived on PC in June of 2022 and it added a new episode featuring the fan favorite ninja Yafi Kisuragi alongside several technical improvements. Integrate takes the already impressive visuals of the base game and pushes them even further. On capable hardware, the game boasts stunning textures, detailed environments and lighting effects that bring Midgar to life in breathtaking detail. The PC version offers a wide range of graphical options as well, allowing players to fine-tune the experience to their hardware. Integrate's main draw is the new Yuffie episode, Intermission. It offers a fresh perspective on the events of Midgar with Yuffie's fast-paced combat and light-hearted story providing a welcome change of pace. So who should play 
Final Fantasy VII Remake. Now, first of all, this is the perfect time to get into the Final Fantasy VII universe because the sequel, Rebirth, just dropped on the PlayStation console. So fans of the original Final Fantasy VII who want to revisit Midgar with a modern twist should definitely pick this game up. Players who enjoy action RPGs with dynamic combat and a captivating story should pick this up and those seeking a visually impressive game with very high production values should definitely pick this game up. But players who already own the base game and are not particularly interested in the Yuffie episode, uh, I think you may want to stay away from this. And um, gamers who want to get hold of the latest and greatest, please note that this is a comparatively older title because the 7 remake originally came out in 2020. This is actually the Integrate which came out in 2022 which was the PC version of the game. What are your thoughts? Please let me know in the comment section. Gotham Knights and Deluxe Edition. Now before you hit that back button, please hear me out for a bit. I know what you're thinking. Why do you have a game like this even on your list? Now please note that I wanted to make this video based on the prices that are currently available on these game stores. So now Gotham Knights is heavily discounted. That means you can get this game for less than $10 for the Deluxe Edition. And the Standard Edition is roughly around $7 or so. And at that price point, this game becomes easier to recommend. Now, I know this is not a great game, but now that I've played Suicide Squad, this game in hindsight feels so much better. For one, it definitely did justice to the whole Batman family arc, the story, and even the way Batman dies, there is something that you feel when Batman ultimately takes his last breath, like his death meant something. Unlike the Suicide Squad, where you just get shot on a bench, on a park bench. <laughs> so Gotham Knights, I would say Gotham itself is a star because the world is definitely rendered well. There are familiar landmarks, there are hidden secrets, which can be explored. The combat style is also distinct in terms of each of these characters, offering a variety of approaches to brawls with thugs and supervillains. And mastering their unique abilities definitely adds a layer of depth to the combat. Now, teaming up with a friend for online co-op, well, it can be fun. And coordinating takedowns and utilizing character synergies adds a layer of strategy and fun to the experience. Fans of the Batman universe who want to explore an open world Gotham, they are definitely going to enjoy this. Players who appreciate distinct character combat styles and mastering unique abilities are going to enjoy it. Those seeking a visually impressive superhero experience, although it's not as good as the Arkham series. But still, I still think this is better than the Suicide Squad. And given you have a powerful PC, you can take advantage of all the textures because this is a relatively newer game. But hey, if you are a gamer who craves a deep and an engaging storyline with well-developed characters, this game ain't it. Players who tire quickly of repetitive missions and open-world busy work this game is definitely not for you. And for gamers who prioritize a robust RPG system with meaningful character progression, this game is not for you. But still, it's not a bad game considering the price. And this video is based on the discounted price. Please keep that in mind. And what do you think about the Gotham Knights now that it comes at less than $10 for the Deluxe Edition? Let me know in the comment section. Ghost Runner 2 The lightning fast sequel to the one-hit kill cyberpunk adventure returns with a neon-drenched world, amped up action and a new emphasis on mobility. The core gameplay remains thrilling. A single hit from you or your enemies means instant death, forcing precise execution and split-second reactions in every encounter. Mastering movement and combat feels incredibly rewarding. There are now expanded mobility options because Ghost Runner 2 introduces new tools like a grappling hook and motorcycle sections, adding variety and a fresh layer of challenge to navigating the environment and eliminating enemies. Who should play it? Fans of the first Ghost Runner who crave even more fast-paced action and challenging combat. Players who enjoy mastering movement and perfecting their execution in a high-stakes environment are going to love this game. Those seeking a stylish cyberpunk adventure with a focus on stylish action over deep storytelling are going to love this game. 
but gamers who tire quickly of trial and error gameplay and prefer a more forgiving experience, you are better staying away from this game. Players who prioritize a deep and engaging narrative with well-developed characters, you're not gonna like this one, and those who played the first Ghost Runner and are hoping for a more revolutionary leap forward in gameplay mechanics, uh, well, all I would say is keep your expectations low and you will not be disappointed. But Ghost Runner 2 definitely delivers a polished and undeniably stylish experience. And if you crave a frenetic dance with death in a neon-drenched world, it's a worthy successor, I would say. However, for those seeking a more forgiving experience or a significant evolution in the core gameplay loop, waiting for a sale is the right choice to do and that's why I have made this video because it's dropped on a sale right now and it's worth checking out now that the prices have lowered. So check out the first Ghost Runner game as well, even that is discounted and then you can come back and buy the Ghost Runner 2 as well. What do you think about it in this list? Let me know in your comment section. I just wanted to add a variety of games uh, and um, that's why this game makes the list. What are your thoughts? Please comment and let me know. Dead Island 2 takes us back to a sun-drenched California overrun by flesh-hungry zombies. This long-awaited sequel promises a bloody vacation filled with over-the-top violence, crafting and a wacky cast of characters. Dead Island 2 revels in its gore. Dismembering zombies with a variety of makeshift and traditional weapons is satisfyingly visceral. The crafting system allows for some creative tools of destruction, keeping the combat engaging. Los Angeles, despite the zombie infestation, retains its sunny California charm, and exploring iconic locations like Hollywood and Beverly Hills in this twisted state offers a unique and darkly humorous backdrop. The playable characters are a motley crew, each with their own personalities and backstories. While not exactly deep, they provide some amusement and banter amidst the zombie carnage. Now, who is this game for? This game is definitely for fans of zombie games who crave gory, visceral combat and over-the-top violence. Players who enjoy crafting weapons and experimenting with different ways to dispatch the undead are gonna love this game. Gamers looking for a light-hearted and humorous take on the zombie apocalypse are definitely gonna enjoy this one. But players who tire quickly of repetitive gameplay mechanics and a lack of variety are not gonna like this one. And those who prioritize a deep and engaging story with well-developed characters are definitely not gonna love this one. Now, this game definitely has potential. The combat is initially fun. It can get repetitive in areas and it offers a decent slice of zombie slaying fun. So if you're looking for a mindless gore fest with a touch of humor, it might be worth checking out, especially now that it's discounted. Now the point to note that this is only available on Epic Game Store right now, and it's gonna be available in April on the Steam Game Store. So do let me know what your thoughts are about Dead Island 2. Lords of the Fallen. Now this is a complete remake of the 2014 title by a new developer, Hexworks. The Souls-like action RPG promises a brutal challenge, intricate world building and a dark fantasy setting. The world of Agony is stunning. A grim yet captivating atmosphere permeates every area, from desolate wastelands to decaying castles. Exploration is rewarded with hidden secrets and lore snippets that flesh out the world's history. The Umbral Lamp introduces a clever mechanic. Switching between the normal world and the spectral Umbral Realm adds a layer of depth to exploration and combat, offering new strategic possibilities. The combat system is challenging but rewarding. Mastering weapon types, dodging enemy attacks, and utilizing the Umbral Lamp strategically are key to overcoming the game's formidable force. So who's this game for? Fans of Souls-like games who enjoy a brutal challenge and intricate world exploration are gonna enjoy this one. Players intrigued by the unique umbral mechanic and its impact on combat and exploration are definitely in for a treat. Gamers looking for a visually stunning dark fantasy experience with a focus on atmosphere are gonna love this one. But players with low to tolerance for um, a game like this, like, I mean, Souls-like game, they're not gonna love this one. And those who prioritize a deep and engaging narrative with well-developed characters, 
it doesn't offer a great story it offers nothing unique as far as the narrative element of this game goes and for gamers seeking a wide variety of enemy types and strategic combat depth i think you're better off playing the souls games this is almost there but not yet there is what i would say when it comes to this game but the reason why it is on my list is because it's a relatively newer title and it's heavily discounted and therefore it's made my list and i think on a pc you're going to enjoy this one even though it's not as good as a souls game but it's almost there so do check it out and let me know what your thoughts are about lords of the fallen from 2023 Street Fighter 6 delivers a powerful uppercut to the fighting game genre, revitalizing the franchise while remaining true to its core. Newcomers and veterans alike will find themselves drawn into the vibrant world of Fighting Ground, the heart and soul of this entry. The core fighting mechanics feel fantastic. Refined controls, a new drive system that adds strategic options, and a diverse roster ensure there's a playstyle for everyone. Whether you are a seasoned veteran or a curious newcomer, Street Fighter 6 is welcoming and rewarding. The World Tour mode is a revelation, an open world hub filled with activities, mini games and character interactions breathes new life into the single player experience. It's a fantastic way to learn the ropes, explore lore and personalize your fighter. The new engine brings the world of Street Fighter to life with gorgeous character models, detailed stages, and impactful special effects. From classic favorites to exciting newcomers, every fighter looks and feels unique. Who is this game for? Fans of fighting games who crave a deep and rewarding combat system with a diverse roster, players looking for a fresh take on single player experiences in fighting games with an open world world tour mode. Gamers who appreciate gorgeous visuals and a vibrant fighting game world with a rich history. But players with limited internet access who might be affected by online connectivity issues may want to stay away from this. Those who prioritize a deep and engaging story mode with well-developed characters also would not like this one. They would probably prefer a game like Mortal Kombat 1. Gamers who prefer a more established online social space with a wider range of activities may not like this one but hey overall it is a knockout with its refined mechanics innovative single player mode and gorgeous visuals it sets a new standard for the genre and whether you are a seasoned fighter or just stepping into the ring for the first time Street Fighter 6 is a must play for any fan of competitive gaming and a fan of fighting games what are your thoughts about Street Fighter 6 And what do you think when compared to Mortal Kombat 1 or a game like Tekken 8 which was recently released? How do you think this game would stack up against them? Please let me know in the comments section. EA Sports FC 24 marks a turning point for the long-running football simulation franchise because it has now shed the FIFA branding. And the game aims to deliver a fresh experience while retaining the core gameplay that millions no and love the new hyper motion technology delivers a significant leap in player movement and on field animations collisions feel more impactful dribbling is more nuanced and overall gameplay feels more realistic than ever before the new play styles system adds a layer of strategic depth players are categorized by their strengths allowing you to tailor your tactics to their unique abilities It encourages strategic team building and diverse gameplay. And the inclusion of women's teams in Ultimate Team and a revamped career mode show a commitment to inclusivity and fresh experiences. These additions offer more variety and cater to a wider audience. So who's this game for? Fans of the series who enjoy the core gameplay and are excited about the new hyper motion technology and play styles system. Players looking for a more inclusive experience with the addition of women's teams in Ultimate Team are going to love this one and gamers who appreciate the familiar yet refined football simulation experience they're definitely going to feel right at home but players frustrated by past entries and hoping for a dramatic overhaul of the core mechanics are going to be disappointed gamers who are turned off by microtransactions and a heavy focus on Ultimate Team are going to be disappointed and those who might be happy sticking with the previous version of the game until the changes feel more substantial overall i would say fifa or 
Oops, brother, FC24 scores some impressive goals with its new technology and features and is worth checking out, especially when discounted. Let me know what your thoughts are about FC24. Robocop Rogue City puts you in the metal boots of Alex Murphy, a cyborg cop returning to clean up the crime-infested streets of old Detroit. This first-person shooter captures the spirit of the classic films, but, well, is it a polished product? I think uh, it is rough around the edges, but what I can say about this game is that the developers understand the essence of Robocop. The iconic voice acting by Peter Weller, the brutal but satisfying combat, and the moral dilemmas Murphy faces truly capture the essence of the character. The game goes beyond mindless action as well because you will encounter light RPG elements with dialogue choices and crime scene investigations that add some depth to the overall experience. The grimy, neon-soaked world of old Detroit is faithfully recreated, bringing the film's atmosphere to life. Exploring the decaying city and battling delinquents is a nostalgic thrill for fans. So who's this game for? Die-hard Robocop fans who crave an interactive experience in that world are gonna love this. Players who enjoy a mix of action and light RPG mechanics with some moral choices are going to love this game as well. And finally, gamers looking for a B-movie style experience that prioritizes atmosphere over graphical fidelity. Now, speaking of graphical fidelity, while the main characters look absolutely fantastic, the NPCs, not so much. They are rough. The textures can be rough, especially in the background and with these NPCs as well. There are repetitive gameplay and technical hiccups as well. And for those who prioritize a deep and engaging narrative, you're going to be disappointed with this game. So it is a fun but flawed tribute. It delivers the core Robocop experience, but stumbles on technical aspects and repetitive gameplay. So if you're a diehard fan or simply crave some nostalgic Robocop action, it's worth checking out, especially now that it's discounted. And... Um, let me know what your thoughts are about Robocop Broke City. Tintin Cigars of the Pharaoh takes us on a globe-trotting adventure with the intrepid young reporter Tintin and his loyal canine companion Snowy. Based on the classic comic, the game promises a charming adventure filled with puzzles, exploration and detective work. The game beautifully recreates the art style of the comics, walking through environments, Inspired by the comics panels, feels like stepping into a living Tintin adventure. The voice acting is excellent, capturing the essence of the characters. The game is packed with environmental puzzles that require observation, logic and a bit of lateral thinking. Solving these puzzles feels rewarding and keeps the gameplay engaging. Exploring vibrant locations like bustling Cairo and the treacherous Arabian desert offers a sense of discovery. Finding hidden collectibles and uncovering secrets adds to the replayability. So, who is this game for? Fans of Tintin who want an experience which is interactive and which is based on the comics. Gamers who enjoy puzzle-heavy games that require observation and logical thinking are going to enjoy this one as well. And players looking for a charming and visually appealing family-friendly adventure are going to love it. But gamers who prefer games with more action and variety in their gameplay are not going to enjoy this one. And those who are turned off by repetitive mechanics and lack of combat sequences, they would want to stay away from this one. And lastly, PC gamers who might want to wait for uh, potential performance patches. This game is not that old, so this game could still receive some performance upgrades through updates. But what I can say about Tintin and Cigars of the Pharaoh is that it's a love letter to a classic character. And the visuals, puzzles, and the atmosphere, they are all great. It looks like something which offers Indiana Jones with the dash of Tomb Raider. What are your thoughts about Tintin and the Cigars of the Pharaoh? Do let me know in the comment section. Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown attempts to reignite the embers of a beloved franchisee. This acrobatic adventure throws you back into the shoes of... No, not the acrobatic prince, but a character called Sargon, who is the protagonist of this game. And... How is the game? Well, the core gameplay remains a highlight. Sargon's movements are fluid and responsive, making wall running, leaping between gaps, and defying gravity a joy to master. 
Traversal feels like a dance and exploration is rewarded with hidden secrets. Combat ditches the time reversal mechanic that we have come to love from the previous games. But this time around, it focuses on strategic swordplay and environmental manipulation. While some might miss the rewind mechanic, mastering parries, dodges and well-timed attacks offers a satisfying challenge. Each area feels distinct with secrets to uncover and challenges to overcome, encouraging exploration. So who is this game for? Fans of the original Prince of Persia games who crave a return to the acrobatic action are going to love this. Gamers who enjoy Metroidvania style exploration with a focus on unlocking new abilities are going to feel right at home because this is heavily inspired by Metroidvania. Players looking for a visually stunning and challenging platformer with a moderate difficulty curve are going to like this one as well. But gamers turned off by repetitive backtracking are going to hate this one because uh, every time you unlock a new ability or you get new gear, you are going to be able to backtrack and access places that you were previously not able to access. So there's a lot of backtracking in this game. And players who were looking forward to playing as the prince are going to be disappointed as well because you're playing as a new character. But... The Lost Crown isn't a revolutionary entry in the franchise, but it's a competent and enjoyable return to form. What are your thoughts about Prince of Persia The Lost Crown? Please hit me up in the comment section and we can chat about it. Finally, we have Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, which takes us on a breathtaking journey to a new region of the iconic alien moon. As a Navi rider forging a new clan, you will soar through bioluminescent rainforests, battle fearsome creatures, and explore the wonders of Pandora. Speaking of Pandora, the world of Pandora itself is undeniably stunning. Ubisoft utilizes the power of current gen consoles to create a wishfully spectacular world, and this game with the right hardware on PC looks spectacular. From bioluminescent flora to towering alien landscapes, exploration is a constant source of wonder. The traversal mechanics are also good. Soaring through the skies on the back of a banshee or grappling through dense foliage feels exhilarating. The freedom of movement makes exploring Pandora a true joy. And playing as a Navi warrior is a fresh perspective. Utilizing their weaponry, their abilities and connection to Pandora's wildlife adds a unique layer to the combat and exploration. So who is this game for? Fans of the Avatar universe who crave a visually stunning and immersive exploration experience on Pandora are going to feel right at home. Gamers who enjoy open world games with a focus on traversal mechanics and animal companions are going to love this one. Players looking for a lighter experience with a focus on environmental themes rather than complex narratives are going to enjoy this. But gamers who tire quickly of repetitive open world tropes and formulaic quests, they're not going to like this one. Players who prioritize a deep and engaging story with well-developed characters are better off staying away from this one. Avatar Frontiers of Pandora is a double-edged sword. While it soars in its visuals and core mechanics, it stumbles in its narrative and unoriginal open world design because you've already seen this in the Avatar movies. So if you're a die-hard Avatar fan or simply looking for a beautiful world to explore, it's definitely worth checking out. And for a relatively newer title, this is heavily discounted right now. And that's why I have made these videos because with these discounts, all these games that have been covered in this video they become so much more easier to recommend. But what do you think about Avatar Frontiers of Pandora? And what do you think about all the other games that we have covered? Let me know in the comments section. Alright folks, so that's all for today's video on some of the games that are discounted heavily on Epic and the Steam Games Store. Now please note that it's literally impossible to cover all the games even if you check out just the spring sale on the epic game store there are 65 pages so i may have missed out on many games but i try to cover these games on my other videos as well for instance i covered games like alan wake 2 on my previous video which is not here 
and Dead Space Remake I've covered in my previous videos, which is not here again. So do check out my other videos on my gaming channel as well. But I hope you enjoyed learning about all these games as much as I've enjoyed making this video. And if you did, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and let me know you liked it. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing for more gaming content. And please also hit that bell icon in case you want to get notifications. Every time I release a new video of mine, you will get notified as soon as I've done that. Thanks for watching, folks. That's it for this one. It's a wrap for this one. And I will see you lovely folks in my next video. Until that time, I'll say take care, stay safe, and may God bless you all.